Right, so good morning. You join me at the beginning of May down at Swan Valley Lakes in Yatesley. It's an infamous venue that holds some cracking carp to around the mid 40 pound mark. They may even be a little bit bigger at this time of the year. It's just before spawning, the temperatures are starting to rise. And to be honest, I'm really, really excited to get stuck into this little micro series that we're doing on the platform. Now the Swan Valley Complex consists of two lakes. You've got Lake One, which is the main lake, and that's the lake I'm gonna be focusing a lot of my time on, I think. But they also have a second lake, which does have a good stock of carp as well. It was a little bit confusing when I got here. There is a bridge right in front of the car park area that goes over onto like a small little island. And Lake One and Lake Two are basically pretty much side by side. However, underneath that bridge is like a gated fence. So that is how the two lakes are separated. I've got to say, I feel proper lucky and very excited to get stuck into some of the fish that reside in this lake. I've never had the opportunity to fish in the Yateley area before, so what a cracking opportunity to get my rods out and fish at this incredible venue. Right, so with that said, I'm going to go for a walk around, have a chat to some of the anglers that are currently fishing on the lake, and hopefully we see a fish or two. Right, okay, so um, it's been a good couple of hours since I've got to the lake. Um, I've had a proper good walk round. Um, if you follow this path all the way down and round, you can get to the other side of the lake and it sort of opens up into a much sort of wider space. And um, yeah, there were two anglers fishing right up the other end um, for the last couple of nights. And just as I was walking round, um, one of them happened to have a 38 pound mirror in the net, which was an incredible carp. I was lucky enough to see it. And his mate nicked a 41 up that end as well. Um, also, I think they both had some mid 20s. So yeah, four fish between them um, since last night. So I really think that um, although I did see a couple of fizzers and that out in front of this swim, swim, swim number three, when I arrived this morning, I think a lot more carp are actually up in the open water sort of section of the lake. See, I've got my eyes set on two swims potentially up the other end of the lake. I'm going to decide though over breakfast which one to go in. Now in good Yateley fashion, there's a calf down the road and apparently if you don't go to that calf on your first session at the Yateley complex, then you don't catch anything. So I guess I'm going to have to quickly pop down there, grab some food. When I get back, I'll sort my gear out, get my barrow out of the van and get round to that side of the lake um, and hopefully get into some of these cracking Yateley carp. Well, I've been for some glorious breakfast down the local calf. So hopefully that good luck charm is going to help me out. And on top of that, I've actually decided where I'm going to fish. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there is a mega common in here. About just around here somewhere. I'm hoping that you can see it. 
and that fish is in front of Penny's Point. But on top of that, I've seen about three or four more since I've been back in here over the last 10, 15 minutes. So I think this is where I'm gonna start. Now, there's a snag just over there that looks promising. And then I've got all the open water out here as well where these ducks are. Sorry, where these, um, yeah, where these coots are, I think, yeah. That I'm gonna explore with a marker rod in a bit, but it's very sticky at the moment because this common in front of me seems very comfortable just chilling there and I don't really want to spook it off. Unfortunately, you can't use zigs at Swan Valley, but the fact that I've got multiple fish in front of me, yeah, I guess the pressure's on. Let's see if we can try and nail one. Right, so as you can see, I'm in Penny's Point, which is positioned on the west bank of Lake One. Now, there's a little bay that's sort of positioned towards the car park area, and that filters down into a slim channel, and then at the end of that channel, it opens up into the main body of the lake. Now, Penny's Point is positioned perfectly because I'm right at the start of that main body of water, which means I'm gonna be able to see exactly what is going on out in front of me here. Now, I've already seen quite a few carp right out in front of this swim, so it has filled me with confidence. But what I wanted to talk to you about was the stock level as well. I did touch on it briefly, but currently there are 10 40 pound carp swimming about in here. And on top of that, there are about five mid to upper 40s with about 50 30 pound fish. So in total, you're looking at about 60 to 65 30 plus pound carp, which is pretty insane. Now with this being a park lake, I've got to say I do feel quite at home and that's because I've done a couple of seasons fishing other park lakes closer to my house. So hopefully I can get stuck into some of these incredible fish. one. Oh yeah right on the edge of the gravel right okay so tap 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 okay right so I just sent the marker float out to that open water spot that I was speaking about earlier on I wrapped the rod to about 14 wraps I've dragged it back to about just under 12 so I've got it marked as 11.8 and um, I'm basically fishing on some proper glassy silt which meets a gravel seam. Um, it's roughly 11 to 12 foot in depth and fish keep showing over that area. They've been doing it pretty much the whole time I've been in this swim, so I've got to be careful really. I think I might have actually hit a carp with a marker float on the way down earlier on, but I don't want to disturb it anymore. I've clipped it up, it feels lovely. So yeah, I've got three spots that I'm really, really happy with. One close in down here on the left, one to the other side of the bank, bank um, on that snag, and then one out in open water. We'll talk a little bit about how I'm gonna approach it bait and rig wise. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna keep it quite simple. One spot's gonna be reasonably heavily baited. I'm gonna put a couple of kilo of uh, hull and crushed boilie over that spot, um, which will be the open water spot. Then the snag spot, I'm gonna fish a pop-up um, probably over just a bit of crumb really. Um, I might add a little bit of pellet into that as well, but I'll decide later on. And then this spot down here, I'm gonna use the bait boat and I'm just gonna fill it with crayfish mini mix and then trim down one of those candy sticks, the crayfish flavored ones, uh, which are like a brown color, just to sort of blend it in and keep it nice and natural. Um, yeah, I'll probably put a handful, maybe two handfuls of pellet in there, um, just enough to sort of get them sort of mooching around really. Those pellets are nice and small, so they should really spread across quite a wide area and it'll keep the carp there um, as and when they come into that area. But yeah, like I say, really, really pleased with the spots that I've found. 
So now it's just a matter of wrapping up my rods and getting them on the dance floor. I've been here all morning and we're going into the afternoon now, so I really want to get my rods set for that prime bite time before it gets dark. So I'll catch up with you a bit later on. I'll talk you through the uh, bait and rigs and stuff. And yeah, we'll go into this first evening with our fingers crossed. Okay, so I wanted to show you the setup that I'm going to be using whilst fishing that snaggy bush to the opposite side of the bank. Now, first off, you probably noticed that I'm using a heavy lead, and the reason for that is because A, I want it to eliminate some of the stretch out of the fluorocarbon. When fishing snaggier zones, it is very important to make sure that you are fishing locked up tight, and this heavier lead is going to allow me to do that. I'm not going to move the rig when I tighten the bobbin all the way up to the alarm. So that's one of the reasons why I'm using it, but also it's going to give me an exceptional hook hold. I've been using these leads both in the UK and abroad, and the hook holds I've been getting with a heavier lead have been phenomenal. I've trimmed down the towel rubber so that the lead can easily eject from the lead clip system. Um, and yeah, literally just put it over just like that. And then when obviously the fish takes the bait, the lead can easily come off. And then I'm using a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader with a couple of blobs of putty up it. I tend to use them between a meter and a meter and a half, depending on what the spot's like. That spot tends to feel quite clear. I cast a lead over there earlier on and it seems pretty clean. So I think a meter to a meter and a half is gonna do me just fine. And yeah, that's pretty much basically gonna be the setup. I'm then gonna attach uh, my chosen rig, which I think on that spot, I'm gonna go in with a pop-up on a Ronnie rig, nice and simple. Hopefully that does me a bite, but more importantly, I wanted to show you how I'm safely fishing this to a snag. Sun has just gone uh, past the horizon and um, yeah I'm going into my first night on Swan Valley Lakes I'm actually quite excited to be fair I've just got my third rod bang on the money um, that's the rod off to the right out in open water um, I put a reasonable amount of uh, 18 mil boilies over that the bug coated in the insect mill kept that nice and simple and then I'm fishing with a simple blowback rig on that spot. So I'm fishing an 18 mm um, hard hooker and I've just trimmed the top of it off and put like um, a section of the candy stick in yellow on the top so it just sits up proudly like a snowman really. So yeah, that rod's all good. Um, the other rod went over to the snag nice and, nice and decent. It dropped really nice actually. And then this spot just in front of this tree went down with a crack as well. So I've got to say, um, despite it being mega busy on the filming front today, I've been running around like a madman really to get everything done, but finally I can settle down a bit. I'm gonna have some dinner in a minute. Anyway, if anything happens this evening, obviously I'm gonna tune in and let you know how I'm getting on. Yeah, let's see what the session brings. Thank you. 
Right, well, good morning. Unfortunately, it was a quiet night last night. Despite getting everything bang on the money and the weather feeling pretty spot on for it. Yeah, it's been quite difficult. I haven't had anything so far, but still got my hopes up. Um, we're into the second day of this session. The sun is shining. It's about 14 degrees today. There's a warm easterly wind, surprisingly just moving across the front of my swim at the moment um, but yeah I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my rods in the water until about sort of 12 one o'clock because yesterday uh, the two fellas that were down that end um, nicked that 38 pound mirror at about sort of half 11 12 o'clock so I feel like bite time will probably go on until sort of 12 one ish at least so yeah I'm gonna keep the rods in the water for now however it's lovely to be here I know there's some mega carp in here, so all I can really do is keep trying. So we'll speak to you in a bit. Right, well, I can already tell from being here that these carp love the snags. I've just seen two sitting just over that small patch of gravel there, right under this tree. Hopefully that sun will creep back out again and you might be able to see them. in here a bit, Jesus, look at that. That's glowing down there. So, like I said earlier on, I went for a little walk and found a few fish held up in a few snags. But the problem is, you just can't fish for them safely in there, so, I'm going to take a couple of hours, have a little walk around, see if I can find a few areas where they might be holding up under some of these overhanging trees and whatnot. And yeah, hopefully, fish for one. I've reeled the rods in, I've just got one rod, a little bit of bait. I also bought my boat as well because I don't have a spoon and it's probably the easiest way to get under any overhanging trees and whatnot. But yeah, this is just one swim up and I actually see one. Uh, actually in two in fact down in that one uh, just on a little sort of patch of gravel under some like fallen trees but yeah i'm gonna go around and see if we can find anything else so yeah despite seeing those carp in the uh, in the edge along the sort of west bank over there i continued walking around because there wasn't really any real opportunity to fish for them safely there and um that's very important so i carried on and when i got round to sort of the back end of the lake which is sort of swim 18 um, over in this corner, basically at the other end of the lake. Um, I've seen like 10 carp sort of just comfortably positioned out in front of that swim. Well, I found some carp, but they're not in the edge. They're out there. There. They're enjoying this sun. So initially I thought, I wonder if they'll take anything on the top, but within about 15 minutes of being in there, like a mirror was real close in and I just flicked out a single hook bait, like a pop-up basically, um, just on some free line, because I was contemplating setting up to fish on the surface and it just wasn't interested. Um, so, what I've decided to do is just set a little trap along one of the snaggy bushes that is also in this swim. I actually got a really decent drop as well um, using the boat on that spot. And uh, yeah, I've been fishing it for the last sort of hour or so. And nothing's happened, but it feels nice in there and I'm contemplating a move from Penny's Point over to this corner swim in this bay. The fish just seem to be right on the sort of outskirts of this actual little bay 
and like have been creeping in and out over the last like sort of hour since I've been in here. So I'm feeling if I can get over here, um, I might have a chance of nicking one. I just feel like they're going to stay down here with the, the easterly wind that we've had since this morning is still like trickling down this way. So yeah, I don't know. It's an hard one. So I've just been back to Penny's Point, packed all my gear up. It's a bit of a trek round to the other end, but finally got round here and yeah. Hopefully the move will pay off, like I say. When I was here earlier on, there were plenty of fish in here, albeit they was on the top, but at least I'm still on them. When I went in Penny's Point yesterday, I was on them, nothing happened. So all you can really do is chase them round the pond, which I've done. I managed to locate them again. They're out in front of me. I'm gonna fish two to the snags and one out into the open water. <sighs> Come on. Hopefully the hard work pays off. Let's crack on and get set up. So guys, we um, are going into the last evening of this first session at Swan Valley. Let's get this last rod out then. As you can tell, I've moved swims and I do feel confident to be fair. I see so many carp in here this afternoon, I had to make the move really. And I didn't have a bleep yesterday in the other swim, so yeah, it's difficult. But hopefully all the hard work's paid off. Um, I've found a pretty nice spot at about 17 wraps straight out in front of this swim. So I'm going to drop two rods on that. Um, I'm fishing one on a pink half tone pop up. I switched over to, from the white uh, milky malt from last night because that didn't do anything for me. So I'm going to see if the colour change makes a difference. Um, and this one. I've actually got a bottom bait on. So I've got an 18 mil bug boily tipped with um, a sliver of the yellow PB candy stick. They're both being fished at the same range, basically next door to one another really. So yeah, that's all good. And then my right rod is just down in front of this snag which I was fishing earlier on. And that's on my infamous wafter rig. So I'm really hoping that this first session ends with a bit of joy. Yeah, the final night is upon us. I've just hit the clip. Oh, just go forward a little bit more. Just hit the clip on the boat. That's bang on. Dropped it. Nice. Right. Let's get the bed chair and bivvy up and have a bit of dinner, I think. I need to eat a bit earlier tonight. <laughs> Just sink this line. There's a bit of surface weed there, which is always a bit problematic, but anyway.
Right, so it's the middle of June and you join me back down at the Swan Valley Yateley Complex where I actually fished about six weeks back. Now I've been doing a couple of filming projects with DNA uh, since then so I have not really been able to get back down again plus on top of that the lake's been shut for quite some time because of spawning. Now it actually reopened yesterday so I feel like I've timed this really well. I've got a couple of nights ahead of me and um, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to this session, to be fair. I spoke to a few people around the lake this morning. I got here about two hours ago now, and um, a couple of fish have been out across the lake. A couple have been out down by the car park end, and a fella just up to my left actually had a 20 pound common this morning as well. So that's good news to start the session off with. I just heard one as well, just out in front of this swim. Now the swim that I'm closest to at the moment and the swim I'm gonna be fishing for at least this afternoon um, is actually the same swim that I've finished my previous session in. And the reason why I've jumped back in here is because A, I've seen a couple of fish out here, but also when I was here before, I didn't really explore the margin area because there was a lot of fish out in front of the swim when I was here before. So as you can imagine, I just wanted to get my rods as close to them as possible. Now this time around, I've found a quiet little spot in this little bay and there's some wicked little spots just in the margin. It's gonna mean that I'm gonna to have to stay really stealthy. So I'm potentially gonna cast a lead to the other side, just in here in the edge. And I'm gonna use the washing line approach for one rod. The second rod, I haven't actually looked at the spot, which is why I'm round here. I've just got a prodding stick with me at the moment. And I'm gonna go down the edge, have a little feel about, and see if there's anywhere I can potentially position that second rod. Now, I'm probably gonna to stick to two rods because there is a fella to my left who's fishing slightly to the right and I don't wanna disturb him. So yeah, I'm gonna go in with two rod approach. Um, I've got some bait crumbed up. I crushed up a load of boilie yesterday and I'm just gonna put a couple of handfuls of bait on these spots. We'll speak a little bit about the rigs and stuff that I'm gonna go in with. But yeah, for now, I'm gonna get in the edge, use the prodding stick, see what's going on on that bush. And uh, yeah, I'll catch up with you when I get back to the swim. pretty solid down here which I was hoping would be the case but I can't really go much further than this but this little cove section here is sort of where I wanted to position my rod now it drops off to about four or five foot just out in front of me um, and my line angle to the swim I can see the swim from here will be pretty bang on. I think I'm gonna cast a single lead over to this spot and just attach the rig from here, throw a couple of handfuls of bait over the spot. And that should pretty much do the trick, hopefully. The other spot is just further down the margin that way, but like I said, I can see that spot from the bank, so I'm not gonna go in there and disturb that at all. Again, I'm just gonna flick a lead straight over to that spot, walk around, put a bank stick in the ground, and then fish that one washing line style couple of handfuls of bait and yeah hopefully something happens I was talking to the bailiff earlier on he did say to me that the carp love to get in here and I can see exactly why with it being warmer there's a lot of overhanging snags and trees in here it's going to give them a lot of shade but also I don't think many people are putting rigs in this sort of area so hopefully that's a bit of an edge with that said let's get back to the swim sort out a few bits and get these rods in the water Water feels lovely. Okay, so you've just seen me cast my first lead onto my right hand spot which goes into a small little cove surrounded by overhanging trees and when I was round there earlier on I could see the bottom from the edge and it just looks crystal clean it's probably about four or five foot in depth and like I say the bottom looks ultra solid so I'm going in with a simple fluorocarbon d-rig that I've got here it's completely invisible 
put a small bit of putty up the middle section here just so it flutters down nicely onto the bottom and I'm fishing that with a simple snowman setup. So I've got a 15 mil secret seven bottom bait there and I've tipped it with a 12 mil SLK pop up. So when that goes onto the bottom, it's just gonna sit nice and proudly over the hook. I've checked it in the edge and it looks wicked. So that's the first rig. And the second rig, I'm probably gonna also fish a fluorocarbon D bottom bait. Um, just on that spot as well. Now I'm going to be fishing this rig on the washing line method. Now if you don't know what the washing line method is, it's basically where you have your line out of the water and it attaches to a bank stick just past the spot and then you can have a small amount of line coming off of the bank stick that drops into the edge and it acts really, really discreetly. So yeah, it keeps a lot of your line out of the water. Obviously I'm going to be fishing this locked up because I'm fishing to a snaggy area and that's one thing that really, really important when you're fishing like this. You want to make sure that you're is set nice and tight your line is bowstring tight to the rig so that when the carp takes the bait it doesn't have much line to take away at all the worst thing you can do is fish this setup on a slack line because if the fish picks the bait up and darts off you're going to be in all kinds of trouble so i make sure that my rod is completely locked down on the rests i use the jag lockdown uh, on the back rests and i also use a set of snag ears on my alarms to prevent the rod from getting pulled round and pulled out of the butt rest so you've got to make sure you're fishing nice and safely when you're do using this method but it's a very very effective method that can help to catch the trickiest of carp so yeah now i've got this nice and tied i'm going to dip it in the Calinus hydro liquid just for a bit of extra attraction get round there place the rig on the spot and hopefully it's going to nail me a carp <laughs> Well, that's good news. I'm really pleased with that first rod. I feel mega confident on that, despite it taking a little bit of time to set. Um, I moved up the margin and put a couple of handfuls of the crumb over the second spot that I showed you earlier on. But the problem I'm facing is that I don't have a boat with me at the moment, so I'm gonna have to cast to it. Now, I've actually cast a lead onto the spot from the bank just now, and the drop seems a little bit softer than when I was round there, prodding it with my landing net pole. So I'm gonna fish a hinge rig on that spot, I think. I've actually got the clip set now, which is good. But yeah, I'm gonna fish a, a simple stiff hinge rig, which, as you probably know, can be fished on a variety of different bottoms. So sometimes when I'm not entirely certain on the bottom that I'm fishing on, I tend to go for a stiff hinge just because it pops up I've got it set to about an inch and a half off of the bottom. My hinges are not that high. So yeah, I've got um, probably a seven inch boom um, with some coated uh, hook link. That's 35 pound, that hook link, so it's nice and strong. And then again, I'm fishing it to a fluorocarbon leader that I've tied myself. So I'm gonna get this rig on the spot. That'll be two on the dance floor. And I'm gonna find a third spot because matey to the left of me just come over and told me that he's moving up a few swims. So it gives me a little bit more space to work with. And um, when I was here last time, I actually found a nice zone just off of a snag a bit further up that margin as well. So I think on that third spot, I'm gonna introduce a bit more bait than I have done so on the two other ones. 
I'm just really looking for a bite on those two rods. So it was just a couple of handfuls of crumb, but I think on this third spot, I'm probably gonna give them a bit of bait. They've just finished spawning and I feel like they might be up for a bit of a feed. So yeah, that's the plan on that one. And yeah, we'll see what happens, but really pleased to be back. And um, let's crack on. Bang on. That is bang on, Rick. Right, so after a bit of messing about today, I've finally got my third rod out on the spot. Now I just wanted to show you the bait that I'm gonna be putting over the spot for this rig. The other two rods have been baited pretty lightly, but I'm gonna put a little bit more bait over this spot just to see if I can get a reaction from the carp. I think once it cools down tonight, they're probably gonna get, that, get down on the bottom and probably have a feed up considering they've only recently stopped spawning. So the baits that I've got in here are a mixture of crumbed S7 and SLK, which you've seen before, but I've also added some whole boilies as well. These are our shelf life boilies. I'm using the S7 and I've got the SLK in there as well. And the SLKs are in eight mil, the S7 are 15 mil. So there's a variation of sizes there for the cart to keep busy on. One thing I'd like to say about the eight mils is how attractive they are really. They're really small, they're really soft and the cart probably go through these pretty easily and as far as shelf life goes i always use shelf life pretty much nowadays because it's so convenient i can store a lot of it in my shed i don't have the most freezer space at home so it really really works well for me i purchase a couple of those big five to ten litre containers that you can put in your shed like they're plastic ones with the lids and um, yeah i just put loads of bags of bait in there keep them in there and when i need them i go and grab them i can even keep some of the baits in my van as well for a long period of time and not have to worry about them going off. So yeah, get on the shelf life if you haven't already. Anyway, I'm gonna put about 10 spawns of bait over the spot to start with. If I manage to nick a fish, then I'll probably put about five or six spawns over the top of the rig again and go from there. But yeah, really, really uh, happy with where my rods are and uh, feeling mega confident tonight. So hopefully I can get stuck into one. Well, it's been a very quiet morning despite seeing numerous patches of fizzing and a number of carp just below the surface in front of me in the swim down there. So I made a decision to uh, move. I'm gonna pack up my gear and move slightly to the left. Now, yesterday, there was actually a fella fishing in this swim um, and in the swim just past me as well. But both of them have left now, so I've got a little bit more water to play with, like especially out in the open areas. So yeah, I think I'm gonna come in here 
and uh, do the last part of this session in this swim. Now, I've never fished a swim before, so I just brought my marker lead over and I just had a little lead about for the last 10, 15 minutes and managed to find a lovely spot pretty much straight out in front at approximately 10 wraps. Now, it feels like silty glass, it's lovely, and then it pulls up into some weed. So on that spot, I'm gonna obviously be fishing past the weed. And I actually think that spot is big enough for two rods. So I think I'm gonna go with two rods on there and put quite a bit of bait on that spot for the last evening. Now, the other rod, I think I'm gonna fish out to the right. And you're probably wondering, why didn't you fish it from the other swim? And the reason why is because there's a big tree that hangs over that swim and it's just difficult to cast that way. So yeah, from here, I'm gonna get a much better line angle. And yeah, like I say, I've put the lead out and um, managed to find another spot at approximately the same range, but to the right of it, there's a nice weed bed and it's pretty gravelly actually on that spot. So yeah, another clean spot that I am gonna put my third rod on. I always like to fish pretty close to weed, especially at this time of year, because the carp just love getting in and amongst it. Um, they obviously sit in there to try and cool down a bit. And um, obviously the weed holds a lot of nutritional value as well. So yeah, I think it's a good uh, option to come in here for the last part of this session. So all I need to do now is just quickly pack my bivvy up. I've brought a few things into the swim already. Yeah, I'm gonna go and sort that out, get my rods in from there, come over to here, and let's see if we can nick one. Another quiet night unfolded, and I've got to say, it really did leave me scratching my head. Both sessions, I'd stayed mobile and put all my effort into location, but for whatever reason, despite being on them, the carp simply weren't interested. In hindsight, should I have stayed put and sat on my hands, had I moved around too much, these were the thoughts running through my head. I woke mega early that last morning, 4.30 to be precise, and I'm glad that I did because I witnessed what probably was one of the best sunrises I've ever encountered. That difference in water and air temperature created a somewhat magical mist on the surface of the water and that combined with the remarkable purples and reds in the sky certainly reminded me of other reasons why I love to go carp fishing. I see the morning bite spell out and after a cup of well needed coffee I left the lake for the second time with my tail between my legs wondering what I had to do to trick one of these Yately carp. Well, hello again, and welcome back to Swan Valley in Yatesley. Now, this is my third session down the lake. Um, the previous two have been rather tricky, to be totally honest, but um, I thought I'd get back down for a couple of nights. It's the beginning of July now, and 
As you can see, it's pretty grey today. We've had a bit of rain this morning, so it's been a little bit difficult filming and setting things up and that, but um, yeah, I got here around eight o'clock. There was a bit of traffic on the way here today. Um, managed to walk around the lake a couple of times. Took my time sort of having a look about and that, spoke to a few people. And the lake's actually been fishing quite difficult. So yeah, it's, um, it's gonna be a tricky one, I think. Um, I've decided to jump in a swim called Swim 14, which is up the top right hand side of the lake. Now on a previous session, I did have a little look in the margin here. Now this, this particular swim has got a lot of snags along a margin. And if you know me, then you know that I like to at least put one rod in the edge. But I think on this particular session, I'm gonna have two in the edge. So I managed to find a wicked spot just down to my left which is under a really, really big overhanging tree. Like some of the uh, branches off the tree have uh, fallen over into the lake. So it is a pretty snaggy zone, but I've waded down the margin this morning, um, flipped a little lead out and uh, found a really nice spot just in front of those trees. So yeah, got a little bit of room to work with and the line lay will be lovely. It will come straight back into the swim. I'm gonna have that rod on a single bank stick going straight out to that uh, spot, fished on a tight line, locked up, so yeah, we're fishing it nice and safely. I've got a 50 pound fluoro leader on this particular rod, which I've got in my hand at the moment. As you can see, it's got a marker lead on at the moment because I've just been looking at another spot out in front of the swim. But yeah, that spot to the left seems pretty nice. It's really clean. It's like glassy silt, so I love fishing on the silt, especially when it feels like that. So yeah, I've just uh, walked down there, chucked a couple of handfuls of 12 mil boilies over the top of it. I'm using the SLK at the moment and I've been coating it in some of the insect meal with some of our hot hemp oil. So yeah, they look really, really good. The other two rods are basically out in front of the swim. There's another overhanging bush further up that margin that I'm gonna be fishing my middle rod on. And it seems pretty deep that spot. It's probably about eight or nine foot, but the drop was lovely. So yeah, I'm feeling quite confident on that one. And then the final rod, which is my right hand rod, um, I've managed to find a little uh, bar, which I think actually continues to the right of this swim, um, because I was fishing in a swim further up that way last time round, and I was actually fishing on a similar sort of feature. So I think it just continues across this part of the lake, um, and then it goes into silt. So I've just clipped up just as the gravel meets the silt. Now, when I got here this morning, there was a bit of fizzing in this swim, particularly um, towards my right hand rod. So it's been fizzing at about sort of eight, nine wraps out in front. And I did actually see one other carp cruising around just under the surface in this marginal area. So there's definitely fish in this zone, but I think I'm gonna keep it nice and compact, just nice and light, fishing for a bite at a time. And yeah, fingers crossed we can get into one this time round. Well, I've managed to get two rods out on the dance floor. Really pleased with where they both are. Both of those rods are fishing along that margin, one down to my left and one straight over that way. Now, as for the third rod, I am gonna be fishing it straight out in front of the swim, roughly about nine wraps. Um, I found a nice section of gravel that meets some silt, silt and I'm gonna fish um, the infamous stiff hinge rig just where the gravel meets the silt, so just on the seam. Um, I like to do that really, just because I feel like those bigger carp tend to feed on the edges of spots, particularly gravel spots. So yeah, hopefully I can pick one up using this rig. Now, I'm gonna approach this rig a little bit differently. The two rods to my left um, are fished on really tight, compact little spots under trees and things. Um, just a couple of handfuls of bait right over the rig. So yeah, really simple stuff, but with this one, I'm gonna just make a bit of a wider spread of bait and I'm actually gonna use a catapult to do that. So I'm gonna cast my rig out. I've got SLK, which have been soaking in some water and some of our Calinus Hydro liquid for the last week or so. So the baits are gonna be really, really soft and basically a bit washed out. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is because I want the baits to look washed out. I want the carp to feel like the baits have been on the bottom for a few days. So just a little tip there if you haven't done that before, just soak some baits in some warm water and leave them to sit. You can add liquids and stuff, you can add salt, you can add whatever you like really. And yeah, it will just wash the baits out slowly so that when you apply them to the lake, they look like they've been out there for quite some time. But yeah, anyway, enough of that. I'm gonna get the rig on the spot and then I'm gonna grab the catapult and just scatter some baits over it, make a 
bigger spread of bait so that the carp can sort of mooch around, pick them up one at a time. So yeah, let's um, get the rig out on the spot and get some bait out there as well. I think it's tangled, yep. Hold on. Oh God, that was going so well. <laughs> there we go, right. Coming in, it's first time, Rick. No messing around. Cool, crack, lovely. It's not a very difficult cast, if I'm totally honest, but I've got that bang on. I'm just gonna sink some of this line, and then I'm gonna put this rod to the side over there, and I can grab the catapult. I've referenced where the um, lead's gone into the water so that I can catapult those baits. There's a couple of leaves out there I'm gonna keep my eye on. Just um, move this rod over here for a minute. Down there for a minute. Grab my catapult, pull my sleeves up. I'll just catapult two at a time. There's no need to put loads in there because I find they go everywhere otherwise. Obviously I do want to scatter them a little bit, but it's more for range really. I find if you put more baits into the catapult and try and get them all out there, they just go everywhere. So yeah, two at a time. I'm probably going to put about 50 baits over the spot. And these baits are covered in that Calinus Hydro liquid. There's a couple of old tiger nuts floating in there, but I'm not worried about them. I'm focused on these boilies really. Um, yeah, just keep getting those out there and creating a bigger spot so that the carp can... Oh, there's already two in there at that time. Getting them out there. Yeah, it's interesting because these days I hardly see people using catapults and I really enjoy using them. You can use them close in, you can use them to get fish in at range as well, depending on what one you've got. I think this one's a colder one, but I've had to repair it recently because it keeps coming apart, as you can see from the uh, cable tyres that I've got on there. But yeah, another little tip, I guess, for you to save some money and not having to keep replacing your catapult. Just cable tie where the rubber meets the actual attachment. Two cable tyres on each section, and that should last you a bit longer. All right, well, probably do another 20 odd baits, I reckon. And that should be good. Right, well, I think it's fair to say that last night was nothing shy of very quiet. It's been pretty dead up this end. Now, I spoke to the bailiff um, about 20 minutes ago, and he said to me that a few fish uh, came out in the bay up towards the car park last night, uh, a couple of mid-20s. So I think I'm gonna pack up and head down that way. I think the guys that were on last night have all sort of packed up and left, so pretty much got a few options. So yeah, I'm gonna walk down there and get my rods in in a minute, um, pack this all up and uh, head down the other end of the lake for this last night. But yeah, it's been very tricky. I felt like it was gonna be a tricky session. And uh, so far, it's proved to be exactly that, but we've still got some time 
and I want to stay proactive, so I'm going to get everything packed up, get round there, and yeah, hopefully, something happens. Feeling rather deflated right now. That's carp fishing. Well, with another pack up and another move on the cards, I did start to wonder if I'd ever get stuck into anything at the Swan Valley Complex. Honestly, I felt like the lake had swallowed up all of my efforts and spat them back out again. I guess it's easy to feel this way though, when things aren't going the way you'd anticipated. I always tell myself in these moments that it's far easier to just stay put and hope for something to happen, but that simply isn't the way I like to angle. I see lots of anglers sticking their rods out for two or three days and don't even consider a move. This approach does occasionally pay off, but for me I want to be on the fish as much as I possibly can. And with a few anglers dropping off and the info that I'd obtained from John the Bailiff, I thought it was the right decision to get on the move and restart down the opposite end. Well, as I said earlier on, I packed up and I'm on the move again. Now I've managed to jump in the first swim on the lake. The car park is just to my right here. And I've not managed to actually get in here before, but I'm really pleased that I've come around here because I've seen probably four or five shows and about 15, 20 patches of fizzing right out in front of me, just before a big weed bed that sort of sits in the middle of this bay here. Now, I spoke to both bailiffs a little bit about the section of water that I'm fishing and they did give me a little bit of info. It's been raining since I packed up, typical. Pack your gear up and it starts raining. So yeah, it's been a little bit of a messy setup um, since I've got round here, but just managed to get this rod on the spot. And yeah, there's a lot of carp here, I've got to say. Um, the other two rods are going to be fished in there. And I'm just going to keep it really simple. I'm going to fish them straight out to that weed bed. And that is where a lot of the fizzing that I've seen has been coming from so yeah I'm just going to fish simple little mesh bags with that insect meal and some of the mini mix pellet in been using that quite often recently and yeah it just presents really well nice and simple I'm not going to put no bait over the top um, just fish for a bite at a time and yeah really hope we can get stuck into one but whilst I'm getting wet here I'm going to salt those other two rods out and yeah we're going to do a final night on this part of the lake and hopefully manage to get stuck into something. Right. Now I've just finished uh, sorting out my second rig, which is going to be a simple Ronnie rig set up with uh, one of our 12 mil bug half tone pop-ups on. I'm going with a pink one. I've been using white, but I don't seem to want the white, so I'm going to give the pink a try for this last night. But yeah, that's going to sit nice and proudly on the bottom like that. Um, and yeah, just a simple lead clip arrangement. And I'm just gonna nick a little mesh bag onto this, which is not even a mouthful of bait. It's absolutely miniature, but that's gonna obviously protect the hook point. And yeah, just put a tiny little bit of food just underneath the pop-up. So yeah, I've clipped the rod up. I'm gonna cast it in now, get the other one done. And then uh, we're gonna go into this second evening. hectic so I couldn't actually grab the camera but I've managed to land my first carp at Yately Swan Valley. The oh mate there's been a silly amount of shows this evening in this uh, little bay here that I moved down to earlier on this afternoon and I really did think it was only a matter of time. Get in! 
Right, the fish is in the net. I'm just going to quickly get the rod wrapped back up and put it straight back out on the spot. And then we'll have a look at it. But I'm absolutely buzzing. Really, really pleased that all the hard work that I've done over the last few sessions has paid off. And yeah, there's still plenty of time to get another one. So come on. It's a common. I'm not sure how big it is just yet. But yeah, I'm just going to settle down a bit, get this rod back out. And then uh, we'll have a look at it. Well, there we go. My first fish from Swan Valley in Yateley. And it's a welcomed common. Might be a scraper 20, to be totally honest, but I don't care. It's my first fish at the lake. I've just put the rod back out on the spot. I'm absolutely buzzing. Right, I'm just gonna um, sort out a few bits. I was just about to eat my dinner actually, so I'm just gonna quickly have a little bit of food while this fish recovers, and then uh, we'll get it out. Yes, get in there, boy. God, the water's so warm. Bloody hell. The carp's warm as well, wow. Check him out. I'm hoping he's gonna be good for me. So much fission out fishing so much fizzing out in front of this swim earlier on so I really really did feel like I was going to nick one and um yeah just slung out a uh, bug half tone in the pink with a small mesh bag of insect milk to that fizzing and it was probably two hours later just before dark and this one's rattled off it's really warm tonight there's loads of rain low pressure so I don't really want to keep it out too long the carp's actually quite warm anyway but just thought I'd quickly show you it <sighs> really really pleased so um, yeah gonna get this back the rods back on the dance floor fingers crossed I have another one before the morning but yeah if I don't mega happy There you go, the other side to my first carp at Yateley Swan Valley. Right, let's get it back. <clears throat> Thank you very much for making my acquaintance, mate. First carp of the, uh, of the new venture over here at Swan Valley, so I'm really pleased. Move that out of the way. And yeah, hopefully, many more to come, but for now, we're gonna let this little one go back to his watery home. Go on, mate. Well, good morning. And as you can see, it is absolutely beautiful behind me at the moment. It's just reached five o'clock, and I myself have got a massive smile on my face because I managed my first carp from Swan Valley in Yateley last night. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't a monster, but sometimes you don't really care about that. There's loads of fizzing going on behind me at the minute. And because I managed to land one on one of those pink half tones last night, um, I've really wanted to switch the other two rods over onto the same method. Very simple stuff. Ronnie rig presentation, uh, pink um, half tone pop up, and a small little mesh bag of that insect meal and uh, mini mix pellet. So yeah, I just sorted out a few bits. Um, unfortunately, I run out of mesh, so I've actually um, improvised a little bit and just made some really small PVA bags that I can sort of hook onto the, um, the rig. And yeah, I've done the left rod about 10 minutes ago and it went out easily. So I'm gonna do this um, right rod right now. I'm just looking at the rods backwards at the minute. So I just had to double check that was the right one. But yeah, it's this rod that I'm gonna redo quick, switch over onto the same setup. The left rod is bang on the money. I managed to get it back out there last night on a mesh bag. So yeah, really pleased with that. I do think there's another bite or two in it before 11 o'clock. You have to be off at 11 each day uh, when you do sessions here. So I've got about six, seven hours left. Um, so 
yeah, I'm gonna get this rod sorted. Um, and yeah, enjoy the rest of this session. But yeah, really, really pleased. And can't wait to get back. Look at this, magical. So yeah, we've come to the end of this session over at Swan Valley in Yateley and I've got to say, I'm really, really pleased with how it's turned out. After making that move yesterday down to the other end of the lake, the car park end, I managed to get stuck into two fish. I had a common, just over 20 pound, and I've also had a tench this morning as well, about five pound, but I just put that one back. So yeah, to get stuck into a few was really, really nice feeling, especially after all the hard work that I've put in over the last few sessions, all the mileage, all the uh, trips and stuff to and from the lake. Um, yeah, it's um, finally given me a little reward, but I am looking forward to getting stuck into some of the bigger ones that reside in here because there are some mega fish in here. I've seen a few on the bank now, I've seen pictures online, etc. And yeah, I can't wait to get my hands on one of those bigger residents. So until I come down here next, I've got a few projects lined up with work, so I'm not sure when I can get back down, but until I get over next time, take care, enjoy your fishing, and I'll see you soon.